Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of my video blog series. I am your host, Nick Renard, and today we are going to be talking about universal app campaigns. I haven't actually done a lot of videos on uh, uh, campaigns that are strictly geared for uh, mobile devices, so uh, this is one of the ones that I've had <clears throat> a bit of experience lately with some of my clients. Uh, I've actually had a lot of success with these so far. Um, yeah, and I wanted to share that with you guys and go over uh, what they are, some tips and tricks, and some obstacles that I ran in, into along the way, and I'm also going to show you the actual setup of it so you can do it yourself. So, what are universal app campaigns? And we abbreviate them in AdWords as UACs. Uh, a universal app campaign, uh, it promotes uh, if, if you have a mobile app that you want people to download, what the UACs will are, are built to do is they're built to promote your mobile app and get people to install your app. Uh, they use um, mobile app installs as the, uh, as the conversion, so they're trying to get as many people to download your app as possible uh, for as cheap as possible. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what they are. Uh, they are compatible with both iOS and Android. There are some complications per device there that we'll go over on the next slide here. Uh, but uh, if you set it up correctly, you can advertise on both of those platforms. Uh, it advertises across the search network, the play network, uh, the YouTube network, and the display network. So it's all over the place. You will need, uh, do, if you set it up and you let's say you don't have a video to promote your app, then you won't be able to advertise on YouTube in that case. Uh, same thing with like the display network, you're going to need to have image ads. I'll go over the specs and whatnot that, and, and where to find uh, more information on that stuff so that if you, you know, if you want to adver be advertising on YouTube with your app, um, some information on how to do that. So we'll go over that in a moment, but the, the, the point is here is that you, the, one of the reasons that these are great is that we can set up one campaign that is extremely diverse and, and advertises across multiple networks. Most of the types of campaigns that we've set up in the past are really only geared towards one network, but this is one of the exceptions that it can, um, yeah, it can advertise across multiple networks, which is kind of cool. Uh, lastly here, uh, UACs are extremely easy to set up. And once they're set up, there's very little optimization to do moving forward. Uh, one of the cool things about UACs, and one of the reasons that I recommend them, is that because the setup is so easy and because optimization is so easy, even if you don't think that it's going to be good, because a lot of people, uh, one of the problems with UAC is that it's, it is part, you know, a lot of people have... Um, criticize the, dis the display network for being too broad and I, I will admit that these campaigns are uh, target an extremely broad audience so there is a possibility that these aren't going to make money for you but that's true with any campaign you never really know if uh, all campaigns have some chance of failing and these you know are no exception to that uh, but you can what you could do is you can test them out with a smaller amount of your budget and let them run for a month or two and you know if they're if they're not doing good or that they're um you know if they're, i'm sorry if they're not doing good then you can shut them off but if they're doing if you see if you're seeing improvement from week to week uh, if you see that the cost for install is going down and getting better uh yeah then you can continue to run them um again doesn't take very much work to run these so you can just kind of get them up and uh let them run and you know see what happens and analyze the data after it uh, after you see it uh it uses a um it uses an automated targeting and bidding to find the most profitable cost for installs, which is the main reason why it's so easy to set up, is that everything is pretty much automated. Whereas with a lot of the campaigns that I've uh, gone over, like setting up a search campaign and optimizing our bids and stuff like that, takes a lot of uh, work, maintenance, um, takes a lot of knowledge on how to uh, implement that, that kind of stuff, takes... Um, you have to be savvy with uh, the UI and being able to make those changes. So in terms of difficulty, these are one of the easiest campaigns that I've... Actually, it probably is the easiest type of campaign that I've ever set up. So yeah, that is definitely an advantage. All right, going over the conversions, I mentioned the iOS and Android. Um, UACs, again, use a... Uh, they use CPA targeting. 
so typically CPA targeting what it is is it's an automated bidding system that allows Google to do the bids for you typically this is frowned upon uh, we, we don't advocate using CPA targeting in most cases but you don't have a choice of the UAC so there's there's no option to use CPA targeting or not use or use manual targeting um, the reason that we typically frown upon CPA targeting is it allows Google to um, whenever they have control over stuff it, it, it can get a little complicated sometimes their algorithm isn't great so if you have a lot of moving parts their algorithm can sort of fail to to generate any kind of revenue for you or profit for you there's also a lot of revenue or I'm sorry a lot of variables that the uh, the algorithms can't account for in certain campaigns so um, you know obviously if we're running that manually then we're able to adjust things based on uh, certain variables that could come up I'm not going to go in depth on those but yeah I guess the point here is is that CPA targeting these campaigns are going to use it but I do not advocate that you use CPA targeting on campaigns where you can manually adjust your bids because if you know how to do it right then humans can do it better than Google can all right uh, with these conversions since it's using CPA targeting your CPA should improve over time because as Google accumulates data within these campaigns they're able to tell which uh, which lines of ad copy and which networks and which ads and all that they can determine which of those are performing better or worse than others so let's say you have uh, four lines of ad copy that you uploaded into the campaign but one of the lines of ad copy tends to has a way higher click-through rate like it gets clicked on way more Google is automatically going to favor that line of ad copy over the other ones uh, same thing for like if if they notice that your image ads are performing way better than your video ads then it will allocate more funds towards the image ads but it can only know that the algorithm can only figure that out if it's had time and money to run so over time you should see uh, some you'll see some pretty major improvements right out the gate because it'll figure out what the the really good and the really bad uh, things to steer away from are but um, over time it'll you know sort of level out a little bit and just minor uh, minor improvements over time um, the other thing to note here is that you never 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 want to set up UACs without conversion tracking they use CPA targeting so if for whatever reason the conversion tracking breaks the algorithm can't work anymore um, this is also a complication because if you're out if your tracking breaks and you don't figure it out for like let's say you're, you're just kind of like letting this stuff run and you walk away from it and you come back three months later and you notice that you haven't gotten any conversions because your conversion tracking broke for whatever reason um, your campaign is kind of screwed like what's happened by that point is that the algorithm can't figure out anymore because now it's thinking that everything is just terrible and so it's it's gonna it doesn't even really know where to spend money uh, at that point you're gonna have to create a new UAC campaign and essentially sort of reset it so that is one of the big disadvantages of UACs is that um, you need to be very careful and make sure that your conversion tracking is always always working uh, because if it doesn't you're essentially gonna have to start over from scratch all right, so in terms of tracking your conversions, Android is the easy one. Android devices, uh, it'll track the installs automatically because Android is a Google product. So that conversion tracking is already set up for you. So if you want to set up, uh, the great thing about setting up on Android is that you can just do it and run it and it'll work and you don't have to do any more work. Um, the other good thing about that is you don't really have to ha have to fear that the conversion tracking is ever going to break. For whatever reason, you know, code gets dropped from a uh, site or something like that uh, because it just automatically tracks for you within Google. So if it breaks, it's their fault, and we can yell at them. Uh, but it, it won't break; it'll it'll work. Um, the iOS conversions, you'll need to track those through a third-party program. So using um, uh, like Firebase or uh, I don't know, like Analytics or something. Um, I'm not really sure what people use to track the iOS conversions. I haven't gone too deep into that. Um, but yeah, you will need a third-party program to track that. Uh, yeah, so that that's some of the complications, pros and cons of uh, the conversion tracking setup. So let's go ahead and move on to an example of how to do this. Let's exit this slideshow. And I have our dummy account set up here. 
and what you'll first want to do is log into AdWords and let's say that this is your AdWords account. Uh, we, I'm going to go from start to finish on setting up a UAC campaign, go through some of the uh, some of the different settings that you can choose from and so yeah let's go ahead and get started. First step is you'll want to hit this big red plus new campaign button you'll see the other ones that we've talked about in the past search network display network shopping campaigns video campaigns um, and then down here at the bottom universal app campaign go ahead and select that give your campaign a name so let's let's say we're setting up um, like UAC for or yeah new UAC campaign let's call it that type universal app campaign pretty straightforward uh, you'll have to select your mobile app. I'm going to use uh, this one here as an example. I actually don't even know what this app is, but um, I'm going to go ahead and select it. But you can you can add you can search for your app uh, here by looking up whatever it is, and it'll search for all of the apps that show up, and you can just kind of browse for it and click on the one that is yours. How do I get out of this? There we go. So select your app. Uh, in this case it's Android. It's for, it's for Android. Uh, scroll down a little bit here where we're going to be creating our ads. Now I'm always going to advocate that you implement text ads. There's a total of four here that we can test. Uh, so you can set up you can set up ads like um, you know great app for friends and oh, that doesn't fit um, but yeah you can put in whatever ad copy you want here ad copy example 2 ad copy example 3 and you can see how it's sort of populating right here into the example ads where it says like great app for friends and the ad copy examples so you can see how your ad would actually show up here um, I have to fill out four of these, otherwise it won't let me submit this at the end of the screen. Uh, but yeah, you can kind of see what your app, your app's going to look like on the mobile devices before uh, you submit this. Uh, it will, again, the automated algorithm is going to choose the ad copies that perform the best. So what you can do over time is you can come back in here and you can change the ad copy. Uh, you could even create two different campaigns and create different ad copies for both of them and see if one ends up performing better than the other. Be a good A-B split test to try out. Um, yeah, just some ideas there. Uh, so that's for text ads, which is uh, for the... Um, Search network, I guess this would show up no matter what. But uh, for for YouTube, uh, for advertising on the uh, YouTube network, uh, you would again you would have to have a video. So what you can do is uh, you can copy and paste the link to your video right here. Uh, you can also search for it. So if you uh, know the name of what your what your video is, you can uh, you can just look it up and select it. So let's say that's the one that is our this would be an odd looking ad <laughs> if this were a real ad uh, so go ahead and select the video that you want to use uh, for the images you can add up to 10 images 10 is a lot but you can um, you can use 10 if you have 10 there's a little hyperlink here that says see supported specs you are going to need to have specific image sizes and formats so you can see here it has to be a gif a jpeg or a png uh, max size 150 uh, kilobytes um, aspect ratio minimum dimensions and then it has some suggested uh, dimensions this is so that it fits in within particular banner slots on different devices uh, I highly recommend you use these four image sizes and don't go outside of those pixels otherwise when it shows up on the mobile app device it's gonna get cut off and you know you won't see the whole it won't look as nice on the mobile app which is going to lower your overall conversion rates so yeah if you have image ads again we have text ads up here video ads here image ads here uh, upload as much as you can and um, I mean even if you only have text ads that's totally fine but uh, yeah you'll need you'll need ads um, next here is your location targeting let's just go ahead and assume that we're just advertising in the United States or you know what let's include Canada we're gonna do it we're including Canada 
if you have other places you wanted to look up, you would just look it up here, like United Kingdom. You could add that. Yep, pretty straightforward. For the advanced location op options, I highly recommend you open this up. Um, Google will default to having it target people in searching for or who show interest in my targeted location. It says that's recommended, which is funny because I highly don't recommend you use that. With that, uh, the reason that it defaults to that, I think it's kind of scammy on Google's part, but it makes it so that if someone is in India and you're only advertising in the United States, but that person in India looks up something like, um, you know, mobile app in United States, just because they had the word in United States in their search query means that your ad can show up for it, which I think is, I mean, if you don't want, you know, mobile app users in India, like if, if that's not a useful app install for you, then why would you want to be advertising in another country? Which is why I think the setting is stupid because, uh, you know, everyone's going to have their specific locations that they want to get their customer base from so why not just set those up um, in order to fix this I always recommend you use people in my targeted location that way if you set it to United States and Canada or you set it to United Kingdom and it is only going to show those ads in those places uh, you can also exclude locations so if you wanna I mean you can just set up again the targeting is pretty straightforward uh, but if you want to exclude certain places you can do that here um, Languages, we'll just set English for now, but if you have other languages for your app, you can obviously set that up here. Um, for campaign optimization, I always uh, leave it on get new users for your app. Um, I actually haven't tried the other one, so maybe the other one's better. I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to learn more or click to learn more about that, and I haven't actually looked into that, so I don't know everything. Uh, for your bid strategy, this is extremely important. You want to think about how much you are willing to pay for someone to download your app. Now, Google is always going to try and beat your target. So if you say that I, I'm willing to pay $10 for an app install, they're always they're always going to try to beat that target. Um, it, and you know, if they can get conversions for six bucks, they totally will. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and say that like an app install is worth $10 to us. You want to set that there so Google knows what their tar or the algorithm knows what it's supposed to target. Uh, your budget is how much you want to spend per day. So if we're, um, let's say you want to spend, um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, budget's pretty straightforward. But us usually budgets are done monthly. So if they say I want to spend 3K a month, um, then you would divide that by 30. But let's just put a, a random number in there, 25 per day. And that's really it. That's all the setup that we have to do for UAC. In fact, when I hit save and continue here, it's just going to say, you're done. Yay. Um, it does tell you to make sure that, uh, or actually, it's an Android app, so uh, conversion tracking is already set up. But again, if this were an iOS app, you would need to make sure that you have conversion tracking set up uh, through a third-party program before you launch this. But we can go ahead and click Finish here. And there's our new UAC campaign. Uh, that's really how simple this setup is. Um, I don't think I really have anything else to add to this. Again, very easy setup for these mobile app install campaigns. I highly recommend that you at least try it out. If you have an app, let it run for a month. If you like their performance, great, let it keep running. If you don't, shut it off. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my next video blog.